Stephen, how come I can't see you? And you too, Gerard. We, can we can we keep all our cameras on just to just to get us going? Okay, thanks, Gerard and Stephen. Yep, that's it. All right, we're live now. Um, welcome, everyone. It's so exciting to be um, to finally to being part of the anniversary session. We've got uh, a full lineup of presenters today. I'm going to switch across, share my screen, and uh, bring across the PowerPoint, my presentation. And can I ask everyone, please, to um, first before we go off, to wave to the audience, say hello, and um, and then just shut down your camera, please, and shut down your and your microphone's already off. Okay, I'm sharing my screen now. And I'm sharing my screen now. <laughs> and my screen won't share. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to go last or something. I can't get my screen to share now. Okay, looks like I'm off. All right, I'll have to go without it. Well, welcome everyone. Um, we've got a full lineup today. And today is our first, so we're nearly a year old today. We've got um, six New Zealand presenters with us, and we've got Kathy Scott here, who's our timekeeper. We've got Manel, who is um, going to monitor the questions and answers. And from behind on Twitter, we've got uh, Monica, who is looking after our Twitter stream. So say hello to everyone. Um, we're looking forward to seeing what happens. Basically, what Teach Meet is. What Teach Meet is a chance where we celebrate teachers. They come and they share their practice and they share something exciting they've done in the classroom and we celebrate what they do. I take this opportunity to put a call out to, um, to the very first team who joined me. That was Andrew and Anne and Emma and Justine and Kathy, Pascal. Thank you so much for helping me problem solve that very first session just on a year ago. Today we've got um, Ariana joining us all the way from Croatia. She got up at 4 a.m. in the morning to join us. Um, Ariana has been one of my um, beacons to get my own, my own Teach Meet International um, New Zealand underway after joining her in Teach Meet International. Today we've got something new. We've got the question and answer using Google. So if you want to use the, the link underneath the wiki, Come and ask us some questions or questions to the presenters about what they've been talking about. If you want to know more, all the links are available on our Teach Meet NZ wiki, where you can um, find access to nearly 40 nano presentations from New Zealand teachers from around New Zealand. And because today is Saturday, I want to give a shout out for Shout Out Saturday. I've got a few people I just want to give a shout out to, and that's Ed Chat NZ coming up. We've got a conference happening soon. Um, we've got CLESO happening in July, and I've, that'll be my next our next Teach Meet NZ session, which we're focusing on language and bilingual teachers. Um, Connected Educator Month happening in October for New Zealand, and we're going to be part of the global um, Connected Educator Month, and Teach Meet NZ will be happening then too. Shout out to the Reform Symposium. We've got um, Justine Hughes, who's going to get up at some crazy hour tomorrow morning to share what's going on in New Zealand, and also Ariana, you're part of that as well. So a big shout out to the Reform Symposium that'll be happening in July. Tomorrow they've got a, 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 mini, a mini session. Steve Wheeler is one of their plenaries. We, a big shout out to any solo teachers out there listening. And finally, a big shout out to any granny who are part of the Sagata Mitra project for the, who are online as part of the Skype granny. Um, thanks, everyone. Without much more talking, I want to pass straight on to um, Gerard. You're up first. Gerard, take over. I'm turning my camera off, but I'll keep the sound on until you're ready, Gerard. Um, I'm ready. Okay. Um, my name is Gerard McManus. I'm a teacher at St. Bede's College in Christchurch. Um, I've been very lucky um, over the past couple of months to start playing around with Pond. Um, I have a role of um, being Head of Digital Technologies at the school as well as um, being an innovator. Um, Pond 
Uh, Pond is a network learning network for learning's portal. Um, it's a where educators can discover content and services, share knowledge, and engage with their peers. It's really about digital discovery, participation, um, being able to access and find those resources that other teachers have found extremely useful, uh, being able to use it more efficiently. Um, Access to the pond is free for all school users. It doesn't matter what area you're in. Um, sorry, it does. Uh, if you're early childhood or tertiary at the moment, you can't get in, but primary and secondary and intermediate, um, they're welcoming people. Um, I'm actually going to demo a pond because I think that's actually the best way to actually start looking at it. So we've got here the uh, the first page. Um, this is the page that everyone gets when they um, when they when they log in. So it's very Similar to search engines that everyone else uses, so there's not having there doesn't have to be much. You can use prior learning. So um, I'm doing a project at the moment on Northhead. Um, Northhead's in Auckland, and straight away I get information not just from Google or Bing. I get it from a whole lot of other places, and this is really where we start looking at it being really useful. Is I can look at Bing and go, okay, yeah, that's the top pages from there. But we've got these deep search providers. We've got Digital NZ. We've got TKI. So I can see if there's other units or some, what someone else has created. And uh, here's an Achieved with Excellence example on, on something someone's done. Um, the Ministry of Culture and Heritage have stuff. Science um, Learning Hub, TVNZ. There's going to be more of these added as things go through. But what I want to show is um, I go down here and... I find, where's North Head? North Head Hokie Harbour? No. I find Head Sunset. Um, I find a piece of work. So, Historic North Head Central, and here's a doc resource. Man, fantastic. So, but I go back to Pond, and it automatically says, hey, is this good? Can I add this to the pond? All of a sudden, it starts going through and creating images. It starts putting in information, so I can add this. I can add a summary. I can add educational suitabilities on how other people might be able to find this. And if we have a look, um, one of these has already been added. It is the historic North Head item, and already there's a learning idea. What is a learning idea? That's an idea where someone's gone through and developed a way for how it could actually be used within a classroom environment. And all of a sudden I can go, hey, that's actually a really good idea. And I can also rate it and add it to the pond. So that's a really quick and way to actually start looking at the catalog. Right. We have a large number of resources already in here. Um, there are services that other people provide. There is also other things that other people have have added themselves that already start making Pond useful. But one of the ways that I see this really is around those learning ideas, is around developing people to start thinking, how can this be used within your classroom environment straight away? And that's where the community comes in. The community aspect of Pond is really starting to develop. Being able to be able to find other educators and ask them questions, follow them, see what they've been adding as a ripple to the pond. So you can start seeing um, more and more um, content being added by people that follow. So what I would like to do is I would like you to start thinking about how you can use Pond. So bundles is what's coming next. is a way for people to be able to um, put together pieces of work as a learning bundle. We would like you to start thinking about becoming a pioneer educator. Are you innovative, engaging, inspiring, a rock star, digitally savvy, and keen to help shape Pond? Sign up. Attend the Pond workshop learning at school, interface, or online, or go to Pond and register your interest. Will you take the plunge? And I hope that has been um, extremely interesting and helpful. Thank you very much. Everyone, if you could turn your mic on so you can give um, Gerard some feedback, that would be wonderful. Well done, Gerard. I can't wait um, to join the Pond, to take the plunge. Um, and I'll be joining you on Thursday afternoon. I've already got my name down, and I've already oh, awesome. checked my 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 um my sign in is all working. So I can't <laughs> wait. Anyone else got some some feedback for Gerard? 
I think it was great to see someone giving a demo, to actually see it live like that was really great. So thank you very much. No worries. Um, Thursday on um, on the Wikipedia page that Sonia had us make, um, I've included a link on how to actually get to that online session on Thursday. And the more the merrier. Brilliant. Thank you, Gerard. Anyone else? It was really concise and succinct, Gerard, and you just, you know, you whacked it out of the park, to be honest. Uh, 36 hours ago, Pond made major changes to the website and started adding in all this functionality, and I got really scared on how I was going to include all of it within this presentation. So I'm really glad that I've been able to show people my experience of Pond as a pioneer um, educator at the moment. Okay. Um, anyone else? Yes, I was. I just wanted to say that I was quite excited this week when I got an email from them to tell me how to get my hands on being a pioneer. So, um, and I have to attend some of the workshops. So I'm going to see which date is going to suit me yeah. because I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, Pond is, I look at it as a way for teachers to actually engage and collaborate. It's not anonymous, you can't hide behind the nickname or anything like that. It is you and your school, so it's really to start an effective program around the sharing and collaborating. Okay, thank you um, Gerard. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate you taking the time and I know that uh, the people on as part of Network for Learning, we'll be really excited to see that too. Uh, Stephen, you're up next. Are you ready? Stephen, I, you need to turn your camera on first before you can share your screen. I am getting close to being ready. So let's just try sharing a screen. Yep. Are we online? Can we, we see? We are online. I can see everything. Fabulous. Okay, so um, my name's Stephen Lethbridge and I'm lucky enough to be the lead mistake maker at Topaki School in Auckland and I'm also known as that 3D printing guy or the guy who likes robots. Um, so today what I'm wanting to do is to share a little bit about our emerging developments in creating a maker culture in our school. So a maker culture is about tinkering and fixing, making and breaking, hacking in the best sense of the word. Yeah, but ultimately it's about about learning. Um, this book here, Invent to Learn, Gary and Sylvia's book, uh, is a must read and is really influencing my thoughts in developing lifelong problem finders and problem solvers. So the maker movement is grounded in, in Papert's theory of constructionism. Uh, the belief that knowledge and understanding is developed through making. It's, it's the backbone of project-based learning, problem-based learning, and, and something that I'm tinkering with at the moment, provocation-based learning. Um, it's evident in our technology curriculum, and it reinforces the dispositions that uh, Carol Dweck, of Carol Dweck's growth mindset. So what is it starting to look like in our place? Well, we have been... 3D printing for a number of years and have even built our own 3D printers. Um, 3D printing is more than a gimmick. It's it, what we see it as is the physical embodiment of the digital that allows kids to prototype and tweak their designs. So if we have a look at um, this example here, one group of children wanted to develop a way of keeping pets calm in civil defense emergencies. So they prototyped a dog collar that included a microcontroller that would connect to a speaker and that would play soothing sounds to the stressed dog. So they developed this from the digital and designing the collar, melded it in a um, 3D printout and then combined the electrical to um, produce a working prototype. The next thing, microcontrollers, uh, what you saw in that, that printout there, microcontrollers require coding. So zombie bots are a great way to get kids coding and making. It's sort of like coding but with a purpose. Children get uh, missions from zombie bot HQ and they start out with simple challenges and then progress to building a light sensing zombie detecting robot. So you can see it's very hands-on and very problem-based. 
Here's a little video, hopefully we can get this to work with some sound, but uh, we'll see if you can hear it. But this video here is showing um, a group of the kids who are um, doing a light sensing alarm so that it detects where the, the zomb uh, so it detects nighttime when zombies are out so that they can have an alarm. What they're doing here is connecting to the code and tweaking the code. Um, the next big thing that we need to look at, or we're looking at the moment, is um, transforming soft materials technology using um, e-textiles, electronic textiles. Um, so children are using conductive thread to produce interactive designs that incorporate LEDs, push buttons, buzzers, and they're coming up with creative solutions. And these are encouraged and fostered through fantastic teaching. Um, but the next thing that we need to think about is that um, a culture, a maker culture, needs to be sustainable. And so that means it needs to be non-person specific. So how do you build that mindset? Well, we're thinking that slow is better. We play, um, we play, we have fun. We have mystery teacher only days where we play with uh, makey makey and lots of other different things. Um, check out the blog post on um, our mystery teacher only day. Um, a time to get together and have informal maker sessions where we just share what people are, are working on and thinking about. Um, ultimately, this stuff is really hard work. Um, it involves changing mental models and learning, unlearning and relearning. So taking it slow is really good. After all, ideas that are acquired with ease are discarded with ease. So here are some fantastic resources if you are thinking about making this journey. Um, check out the real life makers down the bottom. They are a great source of um, inspiration and guidance. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, I love the dog collar. I thought that was fabulous. Um, I'm, I'm always very interested in the in the geek stuff, so I, r I really love the dog collar. And I know that I've you know I've been following you for a while. We've been following each other, and I've watched your pro process with um with with printing, digital printing. So um, and it, interesting too to see the resources, the references that you were using. So I'll be going to check those out later. Um, anyone else? Yeah, why wasn't your dog wearing that dog collar before? Oh, um, because <laughs> she's constantly by my side, so um, she won't get upset. Um, <laughs> um, we, no, no social, no crisis on. <laughs> Um, how do we find out more about zombie bots? Uh, zombie bots, sorry, I'm just out of screen trying to pick my dog up. Um, <laughs> zombie bots is, um, there's a link on the back. Hey, say hi, Nick. <laughs> zombie yeah. bots. Zombie bots is, um, if you do zombie bots HQ, um, you can go on there and they, you can um, order some zombie bot kits. Um, it's run out of New Zealand, so local fantastic people running it fantastic person running it. Very cool. So th that's on the resource page. Fabulous. Anyone else? Okay, um, thanks Stephen. If you can stop your, uh, your screen please. And Michaela, are you ready for us? I am ready. Okay, so please bring your, um, turn your camera back on. And if anything well, happens, can you see? Uh, Yes, we can see you now. Fabulous. Now we see your presentation. Thanks, Michaela. When you're ready. It's my pleasure. Kia ora koutou. I'm Namahinui Kia koutou. So my name is Michaela and I've been working at Albany Senior High School for just over two years. Um, our students are from year 11, 12 and 13 and we study NCA qualifications. Um, we work in a big learning environment like the one you can see now. And the modern learning environment is very much in vogue. New schools are being built and old schools redesigned with open spaces as the main spaces for teaching and learning. I love working in this environment, but is it academically effective? Professor John Hattie of University of Melbourne shows us the open space class ranks only 10th in a list of other more positive effects. However, collaborative teacher efficacy, teachers working together as evaluators of our impact is top and these ways of working are an intrinsic part of open space learning. So what does this actually look like in action? 
At Albany Senior, we have a series of kind of mantras such as have conversations that matter and don't turn a blind eye. So if a teacher next to me can see one of my students is off task, I welcome them to step in. In fact, I expect it. And that's quite a different mental model than um, when you come from a traditional classroom, I've found. Um, all schools and all teachers that I know seek excellence. Um, so for me as a teacher, on display for 100% of the time, for 100% of my lessons, I've certainly had to raise my game. And I see excellence all around me and all the time. And this enables me to work as part of a team. Um, the open spaces help us to build the team. So for example, working next to my history colleague, we can see great opportunities for our students to connect their learning and therefore boost their grades. And as Jane Gilbert says, if we are trying to teach students to collaborate, if we haven't had that actual experience ourselves, how are we going to know what to do? Um, consequently, I'm always learning from my colleagues and our students in the open space environment. And we've had to work on how we share the same space. And this has led me to reflect a little bit on the nature of being a teacher. Um, if I'm not learning about my students, I'm not really a teacher. And that gets to the heart of what kai ako actually means, I feel. My usual phrase um, is, that was interesting, tell me more. It's very positive for our students to see us teachers as learners, so we really are all in it together. And that has huge power. Students who test the boundaries regarding behavior have a whole community there to support them. Teachers are never isolated in the way that you might be within your four walls in a traditional building. It's also been really powerful to negotiate how we use and share the shared space. Living in a community can be really challenging, and there's great learning in that. One thing I really love about the open space is to do with my school systems, because the systems support ways of being that are ranked highly by both Professor John Hattie and Professor Jane Gilbert, and we have excellent results. So I wouldn't choose to teach in the four walls of a traditional classroom again, but it's the building of relationships and the open to learning mindset that matter most. So I wrote a little blog post at Māori Student Success on this that goes into this in a little bit more detail. I'd love to have you um, leave a comment if you've got time. Furthermore, there's a growing number of fabulous resources which support us in learning and teaching in this kind of environment. So nō reira tēnā koutou katoa. Thanks heaps for listening. Um, uh, we'll ka pai, Michaela. Well done. Okay, so if you stop sharing your screen, you'll come back to us. Um, so click the little green button on the left. Yeah, that's it. Well done. Um, I know Thank that you. uh, uh, your, your, it was lovely and clear, and I like some of the concepts that you were sharing with us, particularly from the Māori perspective. Fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else? Very it was clear. really cool, um, Michaela, having been there earlier in the week for the conference to then sort of oh. see a little bit of how it actually worked. Um, we were all kind of wondering and going, how does this work in kind of a practical, everyday sort of a sense? So it's really cool to actually hear from someone that's using it. Thank you. No, my pleasure. I, I, thought I, that, oh. I thought that line that you had about the most important open space is your mind. That is absolutely the experience I'm having and working in this open space as well as these teachers, I think if you put them back in that closed classrooms that their minds have been opened and I don't think things will ever be the same for them. Oh, agree. Yes, I think you're absolutely very well. Thank you. Michaela, it was lovely and concise and it conveyed a lot of information. It was really good. I have a question, I don't know whether this is the right time to put it or at the end, but I have quite a bit of interest in hearing, and I was wondering about noise levels. We've found that that's not a problem, in fact, they're the quieter spaces I've ever worked in, actually. I think because of the respect and needing respect for other people, um, we're quite mindful of that. So when you need to do something like film study, there are kind of spaces that you can kind of go into if you're doing something particularly noisy, but it hasn't been an issue. It's, it tends to be quieter. It's interesting. Come and see us any time. I mean, it, it is interesting. Danielle may find the same in terms of their, their open spaces as well. I think people are, are better at being respectful about the need for um, quiet sometimes. 
It's interesting. It's interesting because it was against what I thought it would be. It's We've done that as well. It's it's far quieter. Even when the spaces are filled up with kids, it's far quieter than what I than a normal classroom environment. Um, I think they're built, um, talking to the architects lately, they're actually built with a lot of acoustic panelling in them, which most classrooms don't have. Mm. Um, and it makes a huge difference. Good wow. to hear. Yep. I, know, I know particularly for you, Kathy, um, with some of the challenges you've had recently. But yeah, so, so those, are, those are some of the questions too that our staff have been asking uh, about what is the noise level like. So it's really good. It's really interesting to hear that from both you and from Danielle, who work in these these in the new the, the environment. Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks, um, Michaela. You can turn your camera off yeah. now, and um, I'll pass it across to Alex. Alex, are you ready for us? If you can turn your camera on, and um, start go. your that's it, and start your screen share. Top left, yeah. You have in the Sorry. green box. Yeah. Alex just had a, had a few troubles with with um sound, but she looks like she's away. Yeah, we. Is that working now? Yeah. Uh, waiting for your presentation to come up. There we go. We're up. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Off you go. Um, hi everyone, I'm Alexandra Gillard. I teach at Diocesan School for Girls in Auckland. Um, I'm in my second year of teaching um, and I'm, my subjects are English and Religious Studies. Um, Sonia asked me to present today um, about the GAVE Summit, the Google Apps for Education Summit that was held earlier this week at Albany Senior High School, which we've just seen from Michaela, um, on the 29th and 30th of April. Um, for me, it was a really engaging, um, uplifting experience. I had never been to a conference of that size or on these topics, education in New Zealand, and it was really amazing to get the opportunity to connect with international people as well as um, all these incredible local people with what they're doing. Um, I went there with kind of a threefold purpose, um, to learn how to help my students, um, to learn how to help my colleagues, and to learn how to help myself. Um, basically, I had a lot of ideas about what education um, using technology should look like, but I didn't really know how to put that into practice. Um, so this was kind of really answered for me, or at least opened up for me on the first day. Um, Swan, who works from Google in Sydney, um, kind of phrased this in his keynote, um, what does technology enable? And he really summed it up in terms of two key things, and that was creativity and personalized learning. And so that's really given me a focus to kind of reflect on what I was taking away um, and ask, am I using technology simply as a replacement as an English teacher? Are they just typing their essay as you're writing it? Or are they using it in creative um, and innovative ways? And how can I personalize that learning for my students instead of simply um, differentiating to different groups? Um, something that I engage with a lot with my colleagues at school um, is this idea that students don't have any knowledge anymore and that they just Google things. And I find this really interesting because I've been using technology um, and the internet as part of my daily life for over half my life now. And I just Google things as well. And I think it's really interesting, and there was actually a, a piece in the Herald this morning um, about this as well, that our expectations of how and why we retain knowledge um, need to change in terms of the expectations that we have of our students. Um, one thing that is really key for me um, as I kind of help some of my colleagues start to use technology in new ways um, is this idea of, of how and why are we engaging with it and, and how can I empower and support them. And a presentation by Richard Wells um, shared this idea of this pencil metaphor that we're all at kind of different stages um, and maybe different motivations for integrating technology in our schools um, and what our role is and how we can support our colleagues. And he came away with some, some really kind of interesting incentives. Um, and I think the biggest thing that he suggested that perhaps resonated with me is that our colleagues are also learners. Just because we're teachers doesn't mean that we can't learn and that um, engaging them in technology is perhaps about understanding the best ways that they learn as well. Um, a poster that was on my wall when I first entered my classroom said, this is a risk-taking, mistake-making classroom. And I left it up because as a new teacher, I didn't really have a lot of my own posters. But I think it really shares a lot about what technology needs to do in our classrooms um, and that we need to try and not be afraid of failure. Um, and this comes back to something that Jim Sill said, that we aren't necessarily the masters of the knowledge, but we're the most experienced learners in the room, and that's something we can share with our students. Um, that we shouldn't be afraid to play, um, that technology is trial and error, and that that can be where some of the best learning happens. 
Um, and summing up, it was an incredible conference. These people were amazing and really, really inspired me um, to take stuff away and, and keep working. Um, so there's some links, and I'd love to, to kind of hear more from you about how you're using technology in the classroom. Um, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Alex. I, um, I, I love the way that I picked you up with the reflection you did, um, the, the, the ongoing blog that you kept of the, of the sessions, and how quickly um, it, 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 there was a lot of, of discussion around it, and how you quickly followed me, you saw something was happening, and that's how you ended up being part of this. And yeah, for your first, this is your first time using Google Hangout, well done. Um, any Thank feedback you. from anyone else for one of our young teacher? Um, I must say it was a fantastic experience to go to be able to go to the GAF summit here in the South Island, and then a week later to hear what was happening in the North Island, and just be able to follow it online is absolutely amazing. Um, they're back next year, so I think if you haven't been, go because you get some great ideas from it. Okay. Um, anyone else for Alex? Just a wonderful professional presentation, Alex. Really great. Thank Not, you. Thank and I really liked your uh, blog as well. I've been reading that, although I wasn't at the conference. Well done. Thank you. Okay, if you can turn your camera off. Thanks, um, Alex. And I will call up um, Georgie. Georgie, are you ready there for us? Turn um, your hopefully. camera on as long as the screenshots yes. are going to work. So your, your camera's working, so now share your screen. Yeah, will do. Okay, here we go. Yep. Coming up. Cool. Yes. All online. And your presentation is live. Perfect. Okay. Tēnā koutou, mālo lele, talo falava, bula vanaka, and good afternoon. My name is Georgie Distict, and I'm the library leader of a brand new secondary school in Hobsonville Point. I have been appointed the task of designing a library for our new modern learning environment. Our school's vision statement contains the words innovation, engagement and inspiration. And this was my metaphorical springboard for building a sustainable and future ready library. The school sets out to change the face of secondary education through personalised learning, powerful partnerships and empowering relationships. So you can imagine that was quite a task and I didn't quite know where to start. But lucky for me, a wise man, otherwise known as Mark Osborne, suggested I watch Simon Sinek's TED Talk on YouTube. His golden circles of influence and the idea that leaders who lead from what they believe succeed became my new mantra. And as all, all good ideas start on butcher's paper with pretty pens, so did I. I worked out my golden circles. I began with the why. How can I create and collaborate to build an empowering, engaging, inspiring and innovative space for our school community? I envisioned this to be about people-driven resourcing. Our library was to be a high-trust space with only windows and no doors. It was about being actively engaged with all of our community and their learning needs. There are no limits, including no security gates and a self-checkout machine. It was about buying what our students needed and wanted, including a PS4 and an Xbox One for our space. Students and staff were to use the library as both a physical and a digital space to connect and collaborate. We wanted it to be available anytime and anywhere, and this meant choosing a web-based cataloging system, using Google Apps to collect data about our users through forms, using Google calendars to book gaming consoles, and designing a Google site which can be responsive to the needs of our teachers and students and be developed as we develop our own library. It was about building a space where our kids wanted to come in and innovate. There's been kids who have been wanting to build game apps. Um, they, want, they are inspired by those around them. And um, in reality, it looks like a noisy, warm and full room where people can come, collaborate and connect with any resources that they may need when they need it. This has not been without challenges. Originally from a primary background, I have had to shift my own thinking and maintain reasonable expectations for myself whilst not falling back into old habits. A library has always been a space where people can come to connect and engage with their passions. They can find what they need when they need it and engage with people who are trained to help them. Modern learning started in libraries. 
Um, if you're interested in finding out a little bit more, there's some links on this presentation which will be available from the Teach Me wiki space. Um, I've also got a blog where I'm keeping track of my journey at Hobsonville Point and we've got some other amazing people like Claire Amos who wrote about the school and its timetable and her views of libraries. Thank you. Well, well done, Georgie. Um, fabulous you. to hear, particularly too. Um, I was so excited because I, I also have a big interest in libraries. Great to have you here with us and to share what's going on at Hopsonville Point with your library. And I've, I've seen it and it's fabulous. Really excited to see what's, what's happening and what you're doing with it. Yeah, it's certainly an exciting space to be in and um, I just feel really awe-inspired and privileged just when I walk in the door in the morning. I can't sort of get over it. It's so cool. Um, as an English teacher, I, I take my students to the library all the time and it's amazing to see um, how librarians are really innovating change and with how students interact um, with research and literature. So it's very cool to see another um, local example. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Georgie, it's really good to see the, um, the blending of the digital and the physical. and That's um, something that's really important and I can't wait for my kids to go there. We can't wait to have them. <laughs> Having having seen the library on Thursday, Thursday, it was an amazing space. So warm, so open, so inviting. I mean, students would just want to go there rather than having to be taken there. It was great to see. Yeah, it's quite funny when it's so full um, during our my times and suddenly it's like there's 60 kids in there, which is half our school population, and we're just overwhelmed with them. Anyone else? Right, I, Sonia, Sonia, you need to give her the gold medal. She came in at 2.56. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, no, on a balanced site. That is not fair. Not fair. <laughs> oh, she's organised. The time has started late. The time has started late. <laughs> I agree with you, Stephen. I agree. <laughs> well done, Georgie. Well done. Thank you. Okay, um, if you can turn your camera off. Danielle, are you ready for us? I'm just about. Okay, yeah, there we go, you're on. There we go, can yeah. you see me? We can see it. All right, off you go, Danielle. All right, so my name's Danielle, and I'm a teacher with Georgie, actually, at Hopsonville Point Secondary. And I started teaching a few years ago, and it was all this hoo-ha about teaching as inquiry. Um, but unfortunately, the schools I ended up in, they weren't really interested. And then when I thought, oh, actually, I'll start this whole teaching as inquiry business, it sounds like it makes total sense to me. Why isn't everyone doing it? Um, I had a go, but it wasn't really until I encountered Claire Amos that I realized, well, actually, there's a lot more to this. And I realized the full power of teaching as inquiry. So today what I wanted to do is I wanted to share how you can actually go about setting up a really good inquiry. So um, you'd start with a problem or a crisis, or you start with something that isn't the way you would like it to be, that isn't the way it should be in an ideal world where all kids are happy and all kids are learning. So as a maths teacher, um, there are a lot of issues in maths. Kids generally don't really like maths. Um, there's also the recent PISA scores that came out where we fell in the international rankings. There's kids feeling like, and grown-ups feeling like once they leave school, the maths that they use don't really match the maths that they used or learned at school. So for example, engineers, they will find another way to do the same problems they were taught at school, but they'll use the environment, they use the tools available to them, and not the methods that they were taught to just repeat at school. There's also this um, thing about how maths problems in the classroom aren't always relevant. And they don't always make sense. Kids are expected to ignore facts that they would never normally ex ignore in real life. Um, so there's this kind of fake authenticity to it. So there's my problem. So what can I do about it? So I wanted to look at engagement because it's considered malleable, first of all. It can actually, it, you can actually improve the engagement for kids. Um, it's multidimensional, so there's lots of components to it. Um, and it's really key in actually improving academic outcomes for at-risk students. And as we know, we've got our Maori Pacifica kids who we really do want to look after. So looking at the Teaching as Inquiry cycle, start it with a research question. 
Um, and then I focused my inquiry by looking at some research. So I looked first of all at problem solving, so what kind of problems um, could help with student engagement. And then I also looked at cooperative learning and what kind of benefits could come from cooperative learning. So I looked at all of these things trying to figure out what could I do to increase the engagement for my students in regards to maths. Um, now the thing about a good inquiry is that you need to gather data to see whether what you're doing is working. So I made up a questionnaire and the questionnaire is available for anyone to use. But also, when you look at all of this data, you need to go about to check that you aren't just reinforcing your own bad behavior. So you need to set up your data collection that if, in fact, your intervention didn't work, that you will pick that up as well. So these are two things that I've, I've looked at setting up so that I could look at whether the interventions I put in place worked or didn't work. And on the left, you'll see the results from the survey, so how I, you can use those. But also on the right, um, Te Kutahitanga has a practice where you simply sit in the classroom and you cycle around every student and just check or cross whether they're on task or not. It works particularly well if you do it at transition points. So this is a way that I could see, well, actually, this has led to students being more engaged or it hasn't. And I need to go back and follow check whether students are becoming more engaged, less engaged. And as this teaching as inquiry is a cycle, I need to go back around, do some more research, try another intervention, has it worked, and keep improving for my students. And that's me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Danielle. Um, I was quite interested to see how you would you would the discussion around um, your presentation as um, as a teacher too, also um, doing inquiry at my school. Um, I love the way that you framed it, and it it just makes it it's so much easier to understand and raise quite a few areas that um, I hadn't quite been addressing. So thank you for sharing that. Really appreciate it. Anyone else? It's fantastic to hear how it's being used. Um, it's one of the. It's the last thing on the RTC stuff that we have to be able to do as a teacher. So to be able to start seeing practical examples of this being used makes it easier for me as a teacher to start looking at how other people are doing this to be able to use it within my own practice. So thank you. You're welcome. And it's really good to see maths taking priority. Well done. I agree. Maths needs a bit of TLC. Uh, I agree too. <laughs> Fabulous. Anyone else? I, I really love the way that you kind of check your own bias. That's such an important thing to do. It's so challenging when we think we have an answer and we've solved a problem, you know, recording whether we actually have or not and then acting on that. It takes heaps of courage. I think that's really awesome. And I love seeing how you actually do it. That's really helpful. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else? All right. Um, Danielle, if you can switch off your camera, please. I'm going to yep. switch across to um, Ariana. Ariana, I said I'd give you a few minutes to share um, from across in Croatia. And um, so if you can turn your camera back on, please, you'll need to do that in order to share your screen. Fabulous. And then up on the left, if you can share your screen and bring in your presentation or just talk about what you what you've been doing um, I want to share my screen just a second please yeah um, this one. On the yeah yeah okay can yeah. you see it now? yes we can see now um, thanks Ariana fabulous magic crochet okay. the classroom yes that's right so uh, first of all uh, I'm really happy to be with you here and uh, I'm going to tell you about my school about uh, the Croatian future classroom that we started earlier this year uh, so my school looks like this as you can see it's uh, it has absolutely nothing to do with the 21st century or the the spaces that I have just seen in your presentation so it's really uh, like from the 19th century I would say 
uh, all, we don't have any technology in these classrooms. We, you, we used to have only this uh, computer lab with uh, computers. Sorry, Ariana, can I just ask, I'm sorry to interrupt you, can you just click, you'll have to click the next image because it doesn't auto queue. So just just um, click on the next uh, one. We're still uh -huh, on slide next. one. So click on oh, slide one. Now, now uh, can you see the computer classroom? No, not yet. You have to click on it. Uh-huh. And now? No, not yet. We can see it in the side. But keep going because we can pick up your presentation after and I can put it uh -huh. together with your screen. So just keep going. Okay. Okay. So, uh, but I'm sorry that you can't see the, the slide. Just a second. I will uh, stop doing uh, uh, the, the slideshow. Maybe this works. Is it better yeah, and, now? And click number two. Can you see yes, the computer? Now we can see. Now yes. we can see it. We're, you're, you're, yes. Now this, yes. yes. Okay. okay. So we used to have this one. Okay. I'll speak a little bit faster. Uh, so it, we used to have this one. Uh, the computers were from the two uh, the beginning of 2000, I think, and they were really old. But this didn't stop us from doing a lot of projects. Can you see a lot of different pictures now? Yes. Yes, I can. Yes, okay, so, uh, and some of them were award winning, and then uh, this got me an invitation to the Future Classroom Lab in Brussels, uh, which uh, I was really impressed with and wanted to do something like that at my school, but then I thought all I need was magic, and how am I going to do that? Uh, because, you know, the finances, money, and so on, it was difficult. However, because at my school, my colleague and I do a lot of uh, um, innovative things, I would say. Uh, we were uh, we were asked to pilot a Samsung uh, uh, pilot program, sorry, a tablet program at my school, and uh, uh, we also I didn't want to bring the tablet into the classroom that looked like the one from the first slide. So we asked the the Zagreb, the cap where I live. This is the capital of Croatia. Uh, we asked the uh, city bureau of, for education for some help, and they helped us. And ten years later, uh, this is what we have. Can you see it now? Uh, yes. Did yes, you, we can. Yes. Okay. It, it's okay. It's going. And then, uh, so this is what it looks today. We also had a video made uh, in our classroom from. Uh, Chicago crew, which you can also find online. It's uh, here is this link. I can post it later. And uh, teachers who started teaching at this uh, uh, computer lab are really pleased. And so are our students. They love this room, and they always ask me. We call it the future classroom, and they always ask me, "Are we going to the future?" And sometimes, because there are so many teachers who want to teach there, the room is busy, and I must say, no, we must stay in the present. So what we want our students to do is to make a difference, but uh, I think that we they can't do it uh, if we, the teachers, don't do it. And uh, my motto is that uh, we should uh, be brave and uh, do things uh, um, and experiment. Okay, uh, that would be all. Thank you very much. Oh, well done, well done, um, Ariana. F fabulous. Love, love seeing this all coming through now. Um, I've, I've, I've seen the video and um, and had seen a little bit about it, but to have you share it like that with us is a is a real honor. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, and and you are our first. Thank you person, because normally we only have New Zealanders, but you're our first person I've called in especially to join us because of the work we've done together. Thank you, Ariana. Anyone else Thank got you. feedback for Ariana? Change. Yeah, you can really, the photographs were very clear and showed us exactly what you were talking about. Well done. And you weren't too flummoxed by the um, technical hitch. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It was my first time on Google Hangout. <laughs> oh, you well, did really well. <laughs> nerve wracking, I remember. <laughs> it definitely is. Thank you. Um, 
Can I just say I really liked the, the last slide with the, the reference to courage. I think that's such an important quality and it's one we don't talk enough about and I think it's absolutely appropriate. It does take a lot of courage to do some change like that and that's really awesome. Um, Stephen, it looked like you were saying something there. Can you join us, oh, please? Yeah, pardon me. It was just uh, very inspirational. Um, good to see and picking up on Michaela's point around um, courage. When you do things that are different, that are that are not part of the norm, that takes a lot of courage to step outside and travel a new path. So, you know, a very good presentation. Thank you very much. Um, Ariana will also be presenting um, tomorrow. Um, it's I think it's like about 1 a.m. our time on uh, RSCon, Ariana. So you'll probably catch a nap to sleep in the afternoon and then carry on tomorrow. Is yes. that correct? Yes, yes that's right. I've, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow is uh, 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 Sunday, right? Yes, it is for us. Uh -huh, for you, but for me tomorrow is Saturday, so it will be the day after tomorrow. Because uh, uh, I'm <laughs> after this uh, teach meet, I'll go back to bed, and when I wake up, it will be early Saturday morning. Cool, yeah. cool. Thank you. Um, could I ask now? I'm going to switch across to the question and answer feature. Um, according to um, to Manal, there's a few questions there. So if you, up on your left, if you can activate the question and answer, you'll see that we've got a few comments there. There's Justine there, um, has been saying a few things. And um, so you, you'll be able to read it on the, on the right hand side. And she's given us some great feedback. Justine, if you've come back, thank you for that. We love seeing that. And uh, there's something there from Karen too. Hi Karen, thank you for joining us today. Lovely to see this. And of course, Monica there, who's watching our Twitter for us. Fabulous. Now, um, and Manal, so good to see you sitting there um, uh, watching the stream too. Now, there was a question I heard for for um, Gerard, but I haven't yet found it. Oh, sorry. Um, the question and answer feature of Google Hangout, I'm still hearing about. So let's see if I can um, I can find out the questions that are happening. Um, someone said that there was a question for um, Gerard. Now I can't even find it. Something about oh, when when do we know that we've been selected for um for Pond, Gerard? Are you able to take over the mic? Um, no, I actually I'm I'm just a teacher. I have no control over any of that. Um, um, I'm kind of hoping that things. There will be more information this week because of the presentation that's happening on Thursday. Um, okay. So I think this week people will start finding out what's exactly going on. But it's also attend the Learning at Schools workshop, attend the Interface Expo, and you can also get in through Pond through those ways as well. So there's broad opportunity for you, for 500 lucky pioneer educators. Okay. I can actually weigh in on this one as well. Um, I, through eChat NZ, I'm able to nominate a few more people to actually get into the pond as part of that first 500. Um, we don't have an official date yet, but it should be within the next month at the very least. Um, so if you are really interested and you haven't given your details to me yet, you can just send me a direct message on Twitter. Um, or if I'm not following you yet, if you just send me a message saying that you're interested and I can see what I can do. Thank you, Danielle, and thank you, um, Gerard, for that. Um, any Sonia, should people put their cameras on when oh, they're talking? please. Um, in fact, we can all turn our camera on and let's see if we can crash it. We've got a few more minutes. Um, and, and, and I'd just like to take the time. Um, well, am I now with any other questions? Because you can, you can interrupt me at any stage if there's something we need to know about. We can all turn our cameras on so we can all see each other. Um, and let's see if we can. Yeah, I can see. There we go. Um, Ariana, have you got to turn your camera on and your microphone on too, please? Gerard, you can turn your microphone on. Manel, you can turn your camera on. It's fabulous. Yep, wonderful. Um, any any comments from anyone? Do this. I'd love, I'd love to make a comment. Yeah, Michaela. Yeah, it's like first time Google Hangout, and just thank you, you know, so much for the coaching. Um, 
Yeah, really, it's been massive, and I hadn't realised how um, overwhelming I would find it. It's really hard. So thank you. I feel a sense of achievement now that I've actually managed to do this. But I can't tweet and listen and read all the stuff at the same time. I'm a little bit challenged, but it's been so. I want to be tweeting all the time. It's been so inspiring. Every talk, I've learned heaps. It's been great. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank I, you. I really sick in that. Um, it was my first time. Um, Sonia tweeted me on. Wednesday night after the conference to ask if I would um, mind stepping in because she'd had someone who wasn't able to. Um, so Wednesday to Saturday I did my first Google Hangouts, made my first presentation, the first screen share, everything. So um, she put a lot of time and effort in behind the scenes and I don't know that everyone necessarily sees that. Um, so a big kudos to you Sonia for, for getting it set up and to everyone for all of the effort um, to on a Saturday afternoon before school goes back. It's awesome. Thank you, thank you, um, Alex. Appreciate that. And we, we also we need one more camera. I must also mention that we've got Monica too. She's done a lot of work behind me. Like I know she worked with um, Stephen and Michaela as well. So oh, a yeah. shout out to you, Monica. Really appreciate all the extra bits you've done. Um, anyone else? Oh, sorry. Um, I've just put a link there. Could you, uh, if that's a link, I'd really appreciate some feedback about how you found Teach Me Z. And uh, Manal, if you can um, tweet that out or, and put that also on the um, question and answer on the on the Hangout, um, so that even if the audience, if they can give us feedback, it would be wonderful. Really appreciate it. Um, if you have something within your school that's happening and you want to share it, this is a great place to be able to, to, be able to I would say, stand up and do it, but at the moment I'm sitting. Um, but actually getting some of this information out there, um, yeah. Look at it. We've got one, two, three, four, uh, eight people sitting here um, presenting their work to, I don't know what the audience number is, but to be able to rewind, go back, I'm going to go in back and rewind and watch some of these other, some of the ones from today, yeah. just to clarify some notes. But it's what, it's, it, it's that whole entire change around professional development, around collaboration and this is a fantastic way to do it. Mm, I agree. I agree, Gerard. I think the rewind aspect is so important because much as I enjoy, I really enjoy this, I'm not actually hearing and taking it on board yeah. and I have to rewind. Um, but it's, it's there forever and mm -hmm. you know, I can do it in my own time and that's yep. wonderful. But well done, Sonia. And also, We've come a long way, Sonia. You've really got it. You've really got it down slick now. We have. Remember this time? Oh, and remember this time last year. I remember um, Fiona calling out on Twitter, may the force be with you. And I didn't understand it was International Star Trek Day on the day we oh, ran it last year. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> star Wars. So, for tomorrow, everybody. May the force be with you. <laughs> And I, I couldn't understand what everybody was tweeting me. This it didn't make sense. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Mm. But okay. also, all the technical issues are, are quite smooth now. And even when your people forget to come on board, you, yeah, it still works. It does. It does. It does. Okay. Mm. Anyone else? We've got a couple more minutes before I'm going to um, stop. And yeah. Yeah, I would also like to say that I'm really happy to be here with you uh, and uh, I'm also really proud to, because uh, uh, Sonia was uh, uh, a Teach Meet presenter at uh, the uh, Teach Meet International meetings that uh, I co-organized and we met on Twitter and uh, I remember when uh, we had our first or second teach meet. Uh, Sonia was awake in the middle of the night. Indeed. And uh, it, yeah, do you remember? Yeah, I do. It was great. <laughs> yes, so these, it was... Uh, these meetings are really, really uh, fabulous. Okay. And of course, well done to Marnell. Quietly is... working away in the background there. As usual. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, it's now three. Um, just before three o'clock. Is there anything else anyone wants to say before I ask you all to hang up? 
Yes, um, I just got something here from Andre from Network for Learning. He yes. says that you can do an online workshop and then you're in. Okay. Thank yep. you, Manel, for that. Oh, Wonderful. It's not, it, it's not that easy. It can't be that easy. We've got to have uh, strict, yes it is. We've got to <laughs> have strict control <laughs> over this, don't we? No, uh, they let you in. We can't just let anyone in. Well, like, they must have been because they didn't let me in the first round and I'm still <laughs> thinking about it. Oh, <laughs> God, no. No, he's just confirming that Pioneer is starting to come in this week, so yeah. yeah from, the, from the 5th of May. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Oh. All right, people, we're, we're, we're pretty much done, I think, so... um. Yeah. Is there any? Do you want to ask each other questions, or have we pretty much covered it? The presentations were so good that you know questions mm. just don't need to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. I, think, I think Sonia, having that little time at the end of each presentation for questions yes. is really good. And perhaps yeah. that short circuited the questions at the end. Yeah. Because yeah. I think. I think it is, um, we learned that one, didn't we, Kathy? Because I, I used to go straight in one after another. And that's one of the feedbacks that we got from the, from the evaluation form. So if you do have time, please go and fill it in. And if you have a chance, do write a reflection and, um, about the process of, of attending a Teach Meet NZ. And I will and it all add it on the page that you've got on the wiki. And it's a great way of triangulating um, your own learning. So, and you'll be able to take everything back and put it on your blog because you really do own everything that you've made. All right, everyone, thank you very much. You may, when you're ready, you can hang up. Or you can sit here and look at me. <laughs> I'll be the last to leave. <laughs> and thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Well done, Sonia. Bye-bye. Thanks, Kathy. See you all. Thank you. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Thanks, Ariana. Really Bye. appreciate you being here with us. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Okay. Bye bye. Good, good night. Good luck tomorrow. Good, good luck. To, yeah, good. Go back to bed. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Okay. Bye, Ariana.